When you hear the word blockchain, what instantly comes to mind? There's a chance that you're picturing a fully transparent distributed ledger. The key word here is transparent. Thanks to this feature, data on the blockchain is available on-chain for everyone to see at any time and from anywhere in the world. Why is this important? For starters, it makes on-chain analysis possible. In this video, we will introduce the concept of on-chain analysis and how crypto investors and traders use it to make smarter financial decisions. Make sure you watch the whole video to find out some of the most useful on-chain tools in the market. But before we go any further, let's zoom out on the whole concept of crypto analysis. It's important to understand that on-chain analysis is just one of the ways in which cryptocurrencies are analyzed. The other two ways are technical and fundamental analysis. The latter takes a deep dive into all the information available about a coin with the aim of determining its intrinsic price. Ideally, investors get to compare the fundamental value to the current market value of the coin to see whether the coin is undervalued or overvalued. The technical analysis, on the other hand, is common among traders since it involves looking at past price movements in an attempt to determine which way the market is likely to move next. At its core, technical analysis is used to find buy and sell signals. Alright, now that you have the overview of crypto analysis in general, let's now focus on on-chain analysis. Just by looking at the name, we can tell that this type of analysis is unique to cryptocurrencies, unlike the other two since it involves blockchain technology. Basically, on-chain analysis gives us public access to the real-time health of a financial system. The information extracted, say transaction data and crypto wallet balances, are used to determine market sentiment and eventually used to make investment decisions. Say a new token just launched, but you're still undecided whether to invest. Information gathered from on-chain analysis can help you make this decision. Okay, let's assume that you find out that the token isn't actively traded, or maybe a large percentage of its circulating supply is held by a handful of whales. These aspects might influence your decision, right? However, the use of on-chain analysis goes further than just making initial investment decisions. It can also be used to measure the strength of a network, evaluate a cryptocurrency's price, see who's buying and selling, or even in criminal investigations. Let's take a closer look at some of them, starting with using on-chain analysis to measure the strength of a network. On-chain analysis metrics may be used by traders and investors to provide an overview of the network. In some way, it answers questions such as, is the network growing? Are people using the network? Some of these metrics may include active addresses. While they do not necessarily show the number of people using the network, they show the number of addresses being used by individuals, exchanges, or even miners. Simply put, the more active addresses on a network, the better, since it's an indicator that more people are using the cryptocurrency, or at least buying it up. Speaking of buying, let's move on to the second metric, transactional volume, which represents the dollar amount of a cryptocurrency exchange between addresses. Most traders consider a cryptocurrency's trading volume to be one of the most important predictors of its future trajectory and performance in the cryptocurrency market. Also, while all cryptocurrencies are volatile, large volume coins and assets tend to be less volatile. The third metric that can give us a good idea of the health of a network is the supply distribution. We've briefly touched on this when we described a network that has a handful of whales may not be the best representation of a healthy network. Whales are basically individuals or institutions that hold a large number of coins. The supply distribution shows the percentage of coins held in addresses categorized by size. It's an important metric since whales tend to affect the market regardless of whether they are holding or trading. If you think about it, if they decide to hold their coins, it creates scarcity, right? On the other hand, if they are actively trading, they would create volatility in the market. The fourth metric used to assess the health of a network is the total value locked, or TVL. 
This term is used in DeFi to describe the total value of cryptocurrency locked or stored in a DeFi application or a smart contract. Therefore, the TVL can be used to gauge the protocol's popularity, liquidity, and trust among investors. For instance, looking at this data from Defilima, we can tell that Ethereum is the most popular chain by just looking at the TVL. And similarly, MakerDAO is the most popular protocol by TVL. Alright, those were some of the many metrics that helped to get a sense of the general strength of a network. Let's now look into how investors and traders use on-chain analysis to see who's buying and selling. While the on-chain metrics we've just covered might represent a way to assess the long-term health of the network, the ones we will cover here are more reflective of the short to mid-term market action. For example, if we saw a large number of coins move onto exchanges, we can conclude that maybe lots of long-term individual investors have made some profit and so they are preparing to sell. This may also indicate that the market may correct itself in the near future due to these actions. Some of the indicators in this category include Realize profits and losses, which measure the dollar value of bitcoins that are being sold at either a profit or loss. For example, if bitcoin was purchased at $20,000 and sold at $30,000, it will be counted as a $10,000 profit. Another metric closely related to this is the supply in profits and loss. It shows the number of coins currently in profit or loss compared to their last purchase price. Generally, a healthy market will have more coins in profit than in loss. Great! The third metric in this category is the realized capitalization. We already know about the market cap, what about the realized cap? It is a way of evaluating cryptocurrencies by adding together the most recent purchase price of every token, say Bitcoin, in supply. This result is then compared to the market cap, and if the realized cap is greater than the market cap, then the overall market is sitting in profit. There are still so many ways traders and investors use on-chain analysis. What we have covered here is meant to give you the basics of this type of analysis. By the way, there are many tools and platforms that offer insightful charts and dashboards to better help users visualize the blockchain data that we have been talking about. Each of them may be suited for different needs, so let's take a look at some of them. The first tool that we'll look at is Glassnode. It's a popular tool that offers all kinds of on-chain metrics to mainly do with Bitcoin. Investors like to keep an eye on Bitcoin's on-chain activity due to its significance and influence in the crypto market. Its price movements often cause a domino effect throughout the rest of the market. Anyway, on-chain metrics available on Glassnode include active addresses, sending addresses, new addresses, blocks mined, and realized cap to name a few. Some of the metrics are free to registered users, while others require a subscription. These on-chain platforms cover more than just specific coins, though. We have ones like Dune Analytics that provide data on specific DeFi and NFT projects. It's additionally a free platform that is run by contributors. To get started, you can input any DeFi or NFT keyword in the search tab. For instance, if we input Top NFT Collections and press Search, we'll get a bunch of results and get to choose the one that best fits our needs. Now we have an in-depth look at these NFT collections through the charts offered and the different metrics provided here. There are several other helpful tools like Nansen, which tracks where money from institutions and large investors is flowing in and out. From Nansen's homepage, you may get to see hot DeFi contracts or hot tokens to give you an idea of what other investors are doing in DeFi. They also have NFT Paradise, which showcases the hottest collections that are being minted or bought by smart money, allowing you to potentially catch the wave for these early on. That said, on-chain analysis has its own drawbacks, with the biggest one being the limited back history of data, mainly since, like blockchain technology, on-chain analysis is still emerging and evolving to accommodate new trends that may require the creation of new metrics. Generally, on-chain analysis shows great promise, but remember that it's not the only tool available. The best traders and investors use a combination of techniques, including fundamental and technical analysis, to make financial decisions. 
Do you use any of the three methods of analysis to make your investment decisions? Let us in on some of your methods in the comments section. Remember to like, subscribe, and follow us on all our socials for future alpha. See ya!